Good afternoon. The public hearing before the City Planning Commission is now called to order. Please turn, turn the sound off on all cell phones and communication devices during the meeting. The City Planning Commission has established certain rules governing the procedures to be followed at public hearings. Before speaking, each person shall give their name, address, and state whom he or she is representing. Proponents for the proposal will speak for a period of 10 minutes. Each speaker shall be allowed a maximum of two. Opponents or other interested parties will speak for a period of 15 minutes. Each speaker shall be allowed a maximum of two minutes. Proponents will be allowed a period of six minutes for rebuttal. Each speaker shall be allowed a maximum of two minutes. Opponents will not be allowed to rebut. No material will be accepted by the commission or its staff at any time during this public hearing. This procedure shall be followed except at such time when the presiding officer shall, with the approval of the commission members present, extend such time. All proper parliamentary procedures shall be followed, including relevance of argument, recognition of speaker, and absolute prohibition of applause. All comments made by proponents and opponents shall be addressed to the chair or a specific member of the commission. These hearings are recorded and broadcast on public access television. Audio tapes and, and all other relevant public records are available at the city planning office and may be available on the city's website at www.noaa.gov. Before we start with the first docket matter, the following items have been withdrawn from the docket for today. So if you're here to speak in reference to any of the four zoning dockets I mentioned, we will not be taking any action um, with them because they have been withdrawn. First, item, item one, zoning docket 3018. Item two, zoning docket 1318. Item number 15, the property acquisition 118. Item 16, property disposition 218. So if you're here for the for any of those docket matters, we will not take any action. They have been withdrawn from the agenda. Zoning docket 1018. Zoning docket. Zoning docket. Zoning docket 1018. This is a request by Constant Street LLC for conditional use to permit a neighborhood commercial establishment in an HURD2 historic urban two family residential district on square 108, lot 10 A in the 4th municipal district, bounded by Constance, Laurel, Josephine Streets, and Jackson Avenue. The municipal addresses are 2126 and 2128 Constance Street. 
The request was deferred from the February 27th City Planning Commission meeting in order to give more time to the applicant to meet with the neighbors and address their concerns. The petition site is developed with a one-story, 1,080 square feet residential structure that had been converted to a non-residential use as a daycare center in 1997. There are no proposed increases to the building footprint, however minor interior and exterior modifications are proposed. The applicant <coughs> intends to renovate and utilize the commercial space as a boxing class studio. This use is recognized as permitted within the neighborhood commercial establishment designation, which is a conditional use in the HURD2 district. Due to the structure's original construction and use as a residence, the proposal does not meet all the use standards for neighborhood commercial establishment under Article 20, Section 20.3.nn. The neighborhood commercial establishment designation was created to allow for the future commercial use of structures in residential neighborhoods that were originally constructed and used for neighborhood serving commercial purposes, such as corner store type structures. The use standards reflects reflect this orientation toward commercial structures. The existing structure is residential in its original design, despite having been in use as a non-residential space for part of its history, and is therefore non-compliant with the use standards for neighborhood commercial establishments. Therefore, staff cannot support the request and recommends denial. First card, Alex Heckel. And you've actually been seated time by two individuals, so you, have, you can speak for a period of six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Um, I want to thank everybody again for putting in the time to go through this process. Uh, it's really been a, a wonderful learning experience. We've met a lot of wonderful people in the neighborhood. Um, we have uh, spent some time going to um, some neighborhood associations and reaching out to community leaders, and the majority of our response have been very positive for the project. Um, a lot of people talk about how it's wonderfully situated behind Franco's and that it's going to be a compliment to the area. Um, I, I can say that um, the low use of the, the proposed uh, project is something that is also a benefit um, and we do also believe that you know there won't be any issue with additional traffic because most of our um, clients are going to be biking or walking or already at Franco's which is just on the other block over there and we also have three other you know, art studios on top of there but um, I, I don't really have anything else to add if you all have any questions um, please let me know but I hope uh, Hope you guys approve our uh, additional use, and I want to thank uh, the council here for being uh, being patient with this and allowing us the time to defer and be with some of the community leaders. All right, thank you. Any questions from any commissioner? Um, if not, is there anyone else here to speak in support of this docket matter? Is there anyone else to speak in support? If not, we'll move to the opposition. I did not receive any cards. Is there anyone speaking against this document? No. Um, then I have a question, Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Mr. Hines, yeah. What, yes, what did you work out with the neighbors? Um, you know, because there's not very much space, um, you know, we only had, um, really there was a neighbor across the street who was concerned about the parking. And um, I think that, um, I think that, I don't know if she realized or didn't realize, I don't know if she changed her mind or not, um, but considering that we are not going to have a lot of traffic and most of the people are you know, already in that neighborhood um, during that period of time, I, uh, you know, we do have a small space in the back that we might be able to put some bike um, racks to help uh, with some of the biking traffic, but you know, there's really not much that we can do other than explaining the project, and that's really what we did. I think initially people were concerned that it was going to be like a boxing gym, and that's not at all what this is. This is just a class-only fitness studio, and um, it, you know, it does tie into our grander mission to bring boxing back to New Orleans, 
which um, we've, uh, we've been really successful in getting the wheels rolling on that. And, um, you know, I don't think there's really much that we can do other than maybe providing that little, uh, little maybe a bike stand in the back. But um, our classes are going to be from 6 to 11, and then there's a break between 11 and 4. Uh, that's really the highest traffic time, uh, I think, in that neighborhood because you have restaurants and people are coming to eat. And uh, then, you know, in the afternoon, uh, classes end, I think, at around 8 o'clock. And um, this is only Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday, we'll be from 9 to 12, not open on Sunday. So um, as far as working something out, really, there really isn't much of a solution other than being able to possibly provide a bike rack in the back. As well. yes, um, the staff report, although um, recommends denial, does have some bullet points in the re within the report recommending provisos. as if the board was, if the commission was to um, vote in your favor. Have you read all of those? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. We have. We're, we're looking forward to working with the community. We really, honestly, we want this to work. We want to add. I mean, uh, as an entrepreneur and as someone who's passionate about boxing and really looks smooth, winded, yes, sir, that was a yes. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Thank you. That now closes the. Commissioner Green? No, I'm sorry, I was jumping the gun. We can um, um, to discuss this particular development. So, with due respect to staff and the fact that staff is correct technically according to what we request, I'm going to move for approval of zoning docket 1018, which is the request of 2126 Constant Street LLC for conditional use to permit the neighborhood commercial establishment. Second. Um, and uh, just a question, does that include the provisos? Right. Well, well, thank you very much. Can we figure out how to pronounce provisos and provisos? <laughs> <laughs> tonight or tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> but I'm sorry, your motion is amended to include the provisos. It would also have to add a waiver of that first use standards, um, which is listed on page 12 of the report. The existing structure is non residential in its construction and original use. It's the first standard for the use standard for Nightbird Commercial Establishment. We need to be waived. Right, so I'd like to technically do that. And my comments suggest suggest that though it is, um, though it does have that look, it is in fact commercial, so it includes the waiver of that um, restriction. And I'll second the, the waiver for the uh, first um, standard set forth in Article 20. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Green to go against staff report for approval of this matter. Um, with all the provisos and also the waiver of um, Article 1. Um, and there's a second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, I'll call the question. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is carried. Mr. Chair, I would just like to uh, thank again on the record. It was in my comments originally, but um, I know of some of the meetings that took place in August. I just want to. Do you mind turning on your mic for those of us far away? Said, I'm sorry. I would like to um, thank again the applicant for their diligence in meeting with members of the community and their sincerity. I think that this is a great um, development, a high and best use for this particular property, and I look forward to seeing it moving forward. Thank you for those comments, Commissioner Green. Just one of uh, we saw them three times and it progressed every time. When we when we put something for, for deferral, a lot of times we see it and no work has been done, which is a, a, a not a good use of everyone's time. So the applicant did a great job of making progress each of the time. So I thank them for the good use of this commission's time. Yeah, thank you, the applicants. <coughs> Zoning docket thirteen eighteen has been withdrawn. So we'll be skipping that zoning docket matter. If you're here, we will not be taking that zoning docket uh, matter up. Zoning docket 01318 has been withdrawn. Zoning docket 071718. Zoning docket 1718 is a request for a conditional use to permit a mini warehouse in a C2 auto oriented commercial district 
the ENARC Eastern New Orleans Renaissance Corridor Use Restriction Overlay District, and the CT Corridor Transformation Design Overlay District. The subject property is Lot 2F, Section 24, LaCrack Track, in the 3rd Municipal District, bounded by Interstate 10, Plainfield Drive, Reed Boulevard, Reed Lane, and the Far Canal. The municipal address is 10301 North I-10 Service Road. The applicant is proposing a three-story mini warehouse structure with 114,000 square feet in gross floor area and 841 storage units on part of, a com of the commercial portion of the subject property. The request was deferred at the February 6th City Planning Commission meeting for the applicant to modify the siting of the building and the parking to come into compliance with comprehensive zoning ordinance requirements. The staff finds that the revised plans are much more consistent with the CZO requirements than the original submittal. However, there are some additional design modifications that are required, which can be addressed through the recommended provisos. The staff finds that the proposed mini warehouse is an appropriate use for the site as it should not have any adverse impacts on adjacent properties. The request is consistent with the master plan and meets the conditional use approval standards. Therefore, the staff recommends approval of the request and the staff recommends approval of zoning docket 1718 subject to 17 provisos. Thank you so much. I did not receive any cards for zoning docket 1718. Miles Granderson, 800 Barone, representing the applicant. Uh, this project is, as mentioned, a mini warehouse, which is a self-storage self center, which is a conditional use in the zoning district. Um, staff has recommended approval. Uh, we have met with the uh, neighborhood association, both the Warwick East, which is a neighborhood association uh, just above the parcel, and uh, with Enonac, and we uh, are on good terms and with all of them. Nobody uh, is uh, concerned at this point. Uh, and again, we are just using the uh, commercial portion, which is the portion of this property that is fronting um, the I-10 service road. And the remaining portion in the back, which is the majority of the property, will uh, will not be used for this project. Thank and, you so much. And the provisos in the report. Yeah, and, and, the and, and the provisos will, will all be met by the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that's speaking support for the zoning docket? If not, we'll turn to the opposition. Is there anyone that opposes this zoning document matter? If not, Mr. Chair, in light of the fact that there are no additional comments and with me adding my appreciation to the Palms, Louisiana, and the applicant for meeting with the residents of that area, um, I have heard that those meetings were very productive and that there was initially opposition, but because those meetings took place, there is not opposition at this time, or there may be, and it's not reflected in cards today. So I'd like to move for approval of zoning docket 1718, staff's recommendation of approval um, with commendations to the applicant for his meeting with the community. It's been moved by Commissioner Green. Um, second by Commissioner Weaver. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you so much. Miles, thank you for coming with something simpler. This yeah. is <laughs> I'll try you next time. Keep coming alone. No yes. <laughs> Zoning docket 2118. Zoning docket 2118 is a request by 3000, 3032 St. Claude Avenue, LLC. For a zoning change from an HMR3 historic Marinie Treme Bywater Residential District to an HMC2 historic Marinie Treme Bywater Commercial District. And this is also for a conditional use to permit a hotel over 10,000 square feet in area in an HMC2 district. The petition property consists of seven lots of record, totaling approximately 40,000 square feet in area, just under an acre. The frontage on St. Claude Avenue in Montague in the Bywater neighborhood. The lots are developed with four historic 19th century two-family residences and one 1960s branch style residence, which was formerly used as an office. The site also contains a significant amount of open space in the rear yard behind the main development. Most of the lots are zoned HMC2 district, but three of the lots within the development site are split zone, meaning they contain two or more zoning classifications. 
Half of these lots are zoned HMC2 districts for the front St. Claude, and the rear portions are zoned HMR3 district. The purpose of the zoning change component of this application is to correct this split zoning condition. The zoning change is also consistent with a the recent future land use map amendment changing the future land use map designation of this portion of the property from residential historic core to mixed use historic core. This change was recently approved for amendment by CPC, or sorry, by the City Planning Commission, as well as adopted by the City Council during the master plan amendment process. The list of permitted uses within the HMC2 district and the corresponding development standards are consistent with those outlined in the mixed use historic core form. The staff is supportive of the zoning change based on this consistency and believes that the impacts of more intense land use permitted within this zoning change request can be mitigated through existing zoning controls in the form of use standards, commercial floor area limitations, design review standards, development standards, as well as limitations imposed on conditional uses. The staff also supports the zoning change as, as it corrects a split zone residential commercial parcel so that is overlaid with only one zoning designation. Split zone lots are generally avoided because of the confusion and potential inconsistencies they can create in the interpretation of the zoning ordinance. The properties in question front along a commercial thoroughfare, and as such, it's logical that the rear of these portions, or the rear of these properties, should maintain a similar designation. The second part of this request includes a request for conditional use to permit the development of a hotel at the petition site that would measure more than 10,000 square feet in gross floor area. Although hotels are listed as permitted uses, Article 10 stipulates that all non-residential uses of more than 10,000 square feet are deemed conditional uses. The developer is proposing to redevelop this site as a hotel complex with an ancillary restaurant, an outdoor bar, outdoor restroom facilities, and an outdoor pool and event yard area. The existing structures fronting St. Claude would be incorporated into the proposed design and would be repurposed as guest rooms, a lobby, a reception area, and a restaurant. Additional guest houses would be developed toward the rear of the site, and the pool, outdoor bar, and event yard would be situated in the middle of the site between the front and back guest houses. The applicant has proposed to provide the required off-street parking for the development off-site on a separate lot located catty corner to the hotel at Feliciana and St. Claude Avenue. The proposed change of use of the site from four, four two-family residential uses in a vacant office to a 37-room hotel complex measuring approximately 28,000 square feet with a restaurant, outdoor bar, pool yard area is a definitive increase in overall intensity and will have impacts on surrounding properties. Under 10,000 square feet, the proposed hotel with ancillary restaurant and bar, provided all the use standards are met, is permitted use in the district and so is considered compatible in nature with adjacent residential use. The staff believes, however, that the proposal which one, exceeds the commercial use area limitation, and two, contains certain open air design features that do not meet the standards of the zoning ordinance, could lead to adverse impacts on, upon neighboring properties. However, these impacts could be remedied with the recommended provisos, which relate to noise generated by special events, amplified sound, backup house activities, off street parking, and outdoor bar seating. This request was deferred from February 6th at the request of the applicant. Since this meeting, the staff has met with the applicant to dis discuss design alternatives that might address some impacts. The applicant has made some modifications to the plans which address staff's previous concerns related to trash storage and design of the proposed off-site, off-street parking lot. Staff has recommended a few additional provisos that correspond to a revised parking arrangement, provisos related to the ancillary bar, pool, um, food and beverage service, and back of house activities have been slightly modified but are intended to make sure that the bar is fully enclosed and that both the bar and the back of house activities placed on the site are placed on the site in such a way to be least impactful um, upon neighboring properties. So the staff is recommending approval of zoning docket 2118 subject to 26 provisos. Thank you so much. And before we have our first speakers, I'd just like to remind the audience to be respectful of all speakers. Um, and additionally, if you Holding up a sign right now, I ask that you put those signs down. We're in a tight space and you might be blocking the view of the person behind you. Just to restate the rules, the proponents will have 10 minutes, two minutes per speaker unless time has been ceded to you. The opponents will also have an additional 15 minutes for re 15 minutes um, 
two minutes per speaker, but we have quite a few cards in my hand, so be respectful of everyone um, that is actually speaking. Um, I'll ask that for this only document matter the speakers come forward. I received several different cards with several different seats, um, so I'll, I'll let you use your time um, if you want to come in a particular order. Just please state your name and address for the record. Good afternoon. Thank you for your consideration here today. My name is Giuliano and I am the applicant on this docket. We're making our application to build a small 37 room full service hotel and restaurant on the corner of St. Claude and Montague. For those that don't know, my wife Liz and I run a small family owned real estate company. We focus on historic preservation, environmental sustainability, and classic design. Liz and I love New Orleans. It is a place each of our families have been coming to for our entire lives. We have spent the last couple of years looking here, not just for a place to make an investment, but also for a place to relocate our family and make our home. Our architect will discuss the ways in which we hope to address our neighbors' concerns through good design and operational restrictions. But I don't want to lose sight of the vision. I did not live through the master plan process, but we are hoping to get the opportunity to execute on the goals that established for this corridor. Through the preservation and reuse of these existing structures and wonderful site, we hope to positively impact the growth of St. Claude Avenue. Positioned at the upriver boundary of the Bywater and St. Claude neighborhoods, we hope the Sun Yard, in its small way, will anchor this growth, providing full-time jobs with benefits and supporting other local businesses on the avenue and the neighborhoods on either side of it. We hope that you will support our efforts today. Thank you again for your time. I'm going to see the rest of my time to my architect, Jason Richards. And Mr. Richard, I received five cards for you, so you can speak for the remaining time or just use the time that you need. Yeah, I won't need it, but thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners and the chair. Firstly, I want to thank the staff for the additional consideration in their report. Uh, the revised report thoughtfully considers the technical challenges that were unique to this site, including uh, the challenges to on-site parking, and we appreciate their willingness to compromise with some parking on-site and some par parking off-site, and uh, their proposal for use restrictions on the bar serving the pool area. We have evaluated the proposed design changes in the staff report and accept the provisos, all of the provisos included in the report. Specifically, we agree to include at least one ADA parking space on site. We agree with the requirements um, proposed for accommodating the remaining parking off site. We agree to the on site uh, loading and unloading, and we agree to the use restrictions proposed for the rest of the site. In, return, in regards to the report's conclusions, we agree that the zoning change corrects an error and omission. We agree with the staff that the proposal is consistent with the master plan and the land use plan, including increasing convenience and walkability along the edge of a historic neighborhood, adding to the range of uses in a mixed-use historic core, and that the density, height, and mass of the new development are consistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. We agree with the staff that the proposal benefits the City of New Orleans as a whole. I'd like to speak very briefly about um, our work with the HDLC. We have worked with the Architectural Review Committee on the massing of the rear structures and renovating the existing buildings in three meetings and have received unanimous approval from the committee. Uh, their comments state that the style and massing of the rear buildings are appropriate for the size and scale of the neighborhood. And uh, one committee member stated the design was better when the infill building of St. Claude uh, in the revised plans, we have revisited the design of this building to accommodate staff comments for parking while keeping with the intent of the committee members' preferences. Lastly, I just want to review some of the design changes that we have made in response to neighbors' comments. Um, we have conducted outreach on this project since September of 2017, but have focused our efforts on outreach in between our uh, previous hearing and this hearing. Uh, we will detail that outreach shortly. Todd Ragusa will be doing that, but as the project's architect, I wanted to first review the design changes that have occurred. The feedback we received focused on noise, privacy, and waste management. Regarding noise, um, we have relocated the mechanical equipment in the back of house areas and proposed that the break room be moved to the interior of the property per immediate neighbor concerns. We have committed to a sound abatement proviso with the Bywater Neighborhood Association as well as a commitment to provide 24-hour contact information for an individual to register noise complaints. We have agreed to additional use restrictions provisos with the Bywater Neighborhood Association beyond the staff report. In regards to privacy, we have altered the design of a building, a new building along the southern edge of the property to make it smaller and lower, ensuring that um, 
in ensuring the privacy of neighboring backyards, a portion of the building was reduced from two stories to one story. In regards to waste management, we have relocated garbage collection to St. Claude Avenue. We have proposed to move garbage storage away from Montague Street and house it on properly in an completely enclosed and conditioned structure. And we have committed oper operationally to schedule trash collection during reasonable business hours. In summary, we have presented to you a project that complies with the master plan, brings new commercial activity to St. Claude Avenue by rehabilitating four historic structures and bringing one commercial structure back into commerce. This project fits within its historic context and is of the right massing and scale for the neighborhood. Lastly, we have made substantive changes to the planning and operation of the hotel based on city planning staff and neighbor input. And I cede my time to Todd. Good afternoon. My name is Todd Ragusa, and I'm a local communications consultant hired by the applicants following the February City Planning Commission hearing. In accordance with the Neighborhood Participation Program, the applicants sought to engage neighbors in the project starting in September of 2017. They held NPP community meetings in August and December. In addition to one-on-one -on -one meetings, ex email exchanges, presentations over the course of the last seven months. My company was hired following the February hearing to help facilitate a robust, productive dialogue with neighbors. We sought to reach out to everyone who has engaged on this project, supporters and opponents, on the property, one in the morning and one in the afternoon and evening, to accommodate neighbors' schedules. We sent an invitation to these open houses via mail and email, and it was promoted by others on social media as well as being forwarded broadly via email. The open houses were held on the property, and a little over two dozen neighbors met with the architects and representatives to learn about the project, share comments, and pose questions. We also participated in a number of meetings with two area neighborhood associations, the Bywater Neighborhood Association and Neighbors First for Bywater. Neighbors First for Bywater convened a forum where neighbors posed questions to the owner and the architect. Subsequently, we worked to answer additional questions and to provide clarity to neighbors, in addition to scheduling more follow-up individual meetings. All of this community engagement has led to direct changes in the design of the project, as well as recommended provisos to address specific concerns. You heard many of these design adjustments to address neighbor comments in Mr. Richard's presentation, and you will hear more from other speakers. In closing, I'd like to stress that our intention is to continue a constructive dialogue with neighbors as we seek to move forward with this project. Um, lastly, I'd like to defer the remaining portion of our time allotted uh, for the applicant's presentation to public comment and request that Marianne Hammett speak next on behalf of the Bywater Neighborhood Association because the Neighborhood Association is jointly recommending provisos. Thank you. My name is Mary Ann Hammett. I live at 816 Cluett Street. I'm here representing the Bywater Neighborhood Association. Um, we support the zoning change. We support the conditional use for the hotel. We have listened to the immediate neighbors and we have come up with four additional uh, provisos to which the applicants have agreed. I'd like to read them into the record right now. The applicant shall submit a noise abatement plan to be reviewed and approved by the Director of Safety and Permits and the Director of the Department of Health and be provided to the New Orleans Police Department. The plan shall document efforts to abate noise and vibration from the pump room. The plan shall indicate compliance with the applicable regulations of Article 4 Chapter 66 of the Code of the City of New Orleans in Perrin Noise Ordinance and shall document efforts to abate noise outside of the property lines which shall include the installation of a system to monitor sound at the property lines to ensure that amplification and noise levels are within permissible decibel limits. The sound monitoring system shall be operational at all times when the outdoor areas are in use. Two, the applicant shall make readily available 
the contact information for an individual who may be reached immediately on a 24-hour basis to receive and address any and all complaints within 30 minutes of receipt. The contact information shall be provided to all immediate neighbors and posted on the property and on applicant's website. The applicant shall also have a staff member on site on a 24-hour basis. Three, access to the ancillary bar serving the pool area is limited to pool patrons authorized by hotel management. All outdoor events, number four, all outdoor events in the main yard area adjacent to the pool shall be limited daily to the same hours as the proviso limiting food and beverage service outdoor seating area. Well, as I say, the applicants have agreed to those provisos and we think that these additional provisos um, add additional um, support for the immediate neighbors uh, and that this project will be a benefit to the entire neighborhood as a whole. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hammond. Um, Ms. Hammond, yes. since you, you actually have, a, I guess, the applicant agreed to those provisos, I'm going to ask for a motion by um, one of my commissioners so that we can ex actually accept that and get that to, um, so we can review it because they were relatively long. Um, we didn't have an opportunity to actually write them down. So I uh, ask for a motion to suspend the rules and then we can actually so accept it. It's been moved by Commissioner um, Isaacson, second by Commissioner Green. All in favor of the motion, say by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Staff already had a copy. All right. Well, they knew how we were going to vote. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. Um, that can, that ends the time for the proponents. Uh, we're now going to move to the opponents. Right before we move to the opponents, um, and uh, on our February 6th meeting, uh, we actually ran out of time and we took a list of those individuals who did not have an opportunity to, to speak. Um, so I'm going to start with those names first before I get to the cards. And if you're here, I'll just ask that you be mindful of all the other additional um, individuals who showed up. Um, and I'll ask also that um, each speaker that comes to the mic, if you can come with a relative point of something that a commissioner did not hear um, to the argument. Um, so if you're not here, um, if the person is not here, we'll just keep keep going and we'll, we'll get to the cards. Uh, first speaker, Kathleen Mon Monroe. Marwan, William Murphy, Sue Mobley, Morgan Dowie, Emily Scoham, Scoham, Beverly House, Ros Rosalind Leonard, Ben Gorman, Danielle Maggio. We're not going to, if you, if you like to speak, you can speak. If not, I'll go to the cards and finish reading these names. Yeah. All right. Melissa Clark, Jeff Batson, Miguel Madawi, Daniel Small, Kelly. Uh, my name is Miguel Maldonado, and um, I'm adjacent to the property. I have 120 feet right next to it. My uh, shed, which is my where I work, uh, is right next to where the pool is going to be. So I guess I won't be listening to birds anymore. I'll just be listening to people hollering. And although you can tell me that you can make any proviso that will stop, or I have a venue to protest, this does not help. Should I protest? I'm in a residential area. This area has always been residential. It should stay residential. Those four houses were residential. Nobody ever calls here to change that. So now they got lucky on that. But the garden, 
has an impact in all our lives. Everybody here really does not want this. It, there is every single neighbor that lives around this place is here today, and we do not like this. If Even if this venue is going to add 30 new jobs to our uh, neighborhood, would they pay $18 to live in our neighborhood? No, they will not. So this is not a positive event for any of us, uh, except for the probably the people that are building this, okay? So thank you. Thank you. Please hold all applause. The time is running. Amy Myers, John Preston, so what's your name? Excuse me, sir. Jeffrey Madsen, 3426 Pergundy. Sir, I didn't call your name. Yes, you did. What was your name? Right before uh, Miguel Madsen. Okay, Jeff, okay. Yeah, yeah, excuse me, yes. Okay, go ahead. We are all concerned about the future because it is the future where we will all spend the rest of our lives. Unfortunately, I must challenge Marianne's proviso, excuse me, of uh, offering the safety and permits the chance to control noise abatement, because I am very skeptical that that office knows anything about acoustics, and probably the decibel level at a, uh, the legal limit of decibel level is at up here, drunk people laughing and screaming next to your own backyard. Has the staff considered what it would be like next to their own property? None of us want that. I don't care what the proviso is. It's it's. A heinous culturally to the neighborhood. It destroy um, in the CZO. It doesn't say anything about maintaining. It says maintaining the character. It's probably in reference to the architecture. Says absolutely nothing about the culture. And development of this uh, nature is a completely egregious affront to the culture of that neighborhood. Thank you, Thank you. John Preston. Hi, I'm Danielle Small. Um, I've worked 20 plus years in the restaurant industry, plus I'm in public radio, so I actually have an idea of what tourists seek, and they seek the New Orleans culture, which you can't have without locals. Uh, the restaurant and bar industry, multiple bars have opened and closed with experienced restaurateurs in this area, and they don't have restaurant experience. I mean, how is it going to serve the actual neighborhood as far as affordability? A hotel, restaurant, bars are not affordable. Families can't go and eat there on a regular basis. And it's a huge space that is not, it, it, but it's for transitional tourists, not for what is going to be happening in the residents. You, residents can't utilize this space. Bywater Association says it's, it's, going to, it's, it's going to help the neighborhood, but how is it going to help the neighborhood when locals can't utilize the space? And I mean, speaking of loving New Orleans and making it your home, how is it more important than long-term residents that were kicked out of this small boutique, small boutique area? It doesn't seem small when you look at the scope of what actually the bywater space is. Thank you. Thank you. If I called your name, you can just stand to the side. Oh, oh, who's there? Uh, Emily Schoenbaum. I live at 1009 Montague. I'd like to cede my time to Mark Gonzalez because I had search. Thank you. <laughs> My name is Laura Eddie Myers, and I have my time, time seen by Steve Merlin. Um, and I also represent the owner, Mr. Michael Joseph, who I spoke with the other day, who's owned this property since the 1970s when he bought it off his mother. So thank you for taking the time to listen to our heartfelt concerns. I live at 1039 Montague, and our rental property backs onto proposed Sun Yard development. This project will irreparably harm the neighbourhood because of its large scale. The loss of residential housing and displacement of residents has already occurred, and the developers Liz and Giuliano have continued to try to purchase our home from Mr. Michael Joseph, even after having met us and knowing how much we love living in that house. They don't care about the displacement their project is causing, and it feels really predatory. It's incomprehensible to me that it would be expected for neighbours to bear the brunt of the smell and nuisance of trash collection on a one-way residential street. 
and this must be clarified and it must be moved to St. Claude. The Bywood Neighbourhood Association's claim that this project will benefit neighbours is simply untrue. A hotel with 90-something person capacity for tourists and 30-odd staff requires far more parking than this neighbourhood can accommodate, and even with that extra lot that we're going to move on to. A venue operating on weekends until midnight is unacceptable to us. We want the indoor music over by the outdoor music over by 8 p.m. We moved out of the quarter to move to have a more peaceful life. We want the bar to be along St. Claude like the other nighttime venues. I'd like to be assured that the soundproofing will be further examined. I'd like ongoing noise monitoring by the city so it's just not left to residents to complain to the police about this. And one of the developers, Giuliano, had the gall to suggest to my partner Steve and neighbour Nathan that he would generously place the cold storage room along our back fence to create a white noise barrier against its mu the music and partying sounds. I doubt that he personally would tolerate this. In fact, he told us he didn't imagine they would live in the neighbourhood for long because the houses were too small for him. These are not people who care about the Bywater or New Orleans. And you can tell I am a transplant, but I would never profess to love a place then set about trying to change it like this. I implore you to please defer these applications until these issues have been more concretely resolved in order to minimise the harm to this historic neighbourhood. Thank you. Um, I will ask you to see the time to, to mark, I believe. Thank you for coming to this time. No, no, I did not read that time list, but I'm, I'm, see, I'm allowing the last speaker to see that since she, she had, she was un, unable to, to actually talk. So I'm going to speak twice? No, you, you have time right now because we don't know if we're going to actually, if everyone's going to have an opportunity to talk. We're running out of time? Okay. Yeah. Um, my name is Mark Gonzalez. I'm here as a board member and speaking on behalf of the Neighbors First for Bywater Neighborhood Organization. Our neighborhood organization thanks you for your prior action in this matter, deferring today's hearing so as to give our group and the neighbors time to meet with the developers and hear from all sides on the concerns growing out of this proposed development. We met on March 7th, had a full house, and many concerns were both raised and discussed. Based on that meeting and our own board discussion thereafter on the 11th, the Neighbors First for Bywater is opposed to the conditional use and zoning applications as noted above and due to the following problems that we've, we saw in both the presentations and in our own investigations. The provisors suggested by the CPC are not sufficient to mitigate the negative impacts of this project on the residential neighbors. Provisors should be made to deal with the pool placement, parking, which is not enough, noise, outdoor special events, and the total on-site capacity. It was, let me note here, it was rather interesting at our meeting that they had no real idea of what the total capacity is going to be for this, for this project of theirs. I mean, it was going into the hundreds. Um, next, we object to this because of the problem of granting the conditional use would violate the, the approval standards of 4.3F, number 4, and number 6 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. Finally, HMC2 is intended for businesses that are neighborhood friendly. So allowing one to violate the 10,000 square foot limit over 100%, and as I understand from today, it's almost 300, almost three times, would render meaningless the zoning designation for this area of Bywater. Um, I would like to also take a moment, since I apparently have the time, to address some of the issues that the BNA has presented. And I would like to really note for this commission that the BNA never had a meeting on this. They never had a meeting which notified the neighbors. They never had a meeting where the neighbors were, were invited to discuss this issue. And what you're really hearing from is one person in particular from the BNA, and that's Marianne Hammett. She's almost like the, she is the zoning, alt, uh, <laughs> she's the zoning czar for the BNA. You're not really, you're not, when, when people, People say three and four times that the BNA is supporting this. You, you must understand that the BNA is supporting this because of one person or a small handful of people, not a neighborhood organization. Let me address one of their, their provisos. Access to the bar is to be limited to pool patrons agreed to by the owners. <laughs> That's a proviso? 
Like anybody that can buy a drink can go to the pool. And that concludes your time. Thank you very much. Colin Herschel, Andy Churchill, Michael Bowman, Kimberly Herbert. Um, I'm a uh, high school teacher. I've lived in New Orleans. This is my 10th year here. I grew up in Louisiana. I've actually found it increasingly difficult the last three years to find affordable housing. I'm a renter, but not for lack of trying to buy a house. And I keep getting pushed um, farther away from where I'd initially live. These days I live down the street from this development. And um, I don't think this is going to help the housing situation at all. I think it's going to actually exacerbate it and make it far worse. As of right now, when I walk across St. Cloud to go see my friends, I pass three or four Airbnbs on my way there. There's several that are in the neighborhood. That has not been regulated at all, so I really don't understand how this is going to be better regulated if that isn't under control. The parking situation is also real, too. As of right now, it is extremely difficult to park in St. Claude all around the Bywater neighborhood. And just this last Saturday, uh, down the street from my house, someone was actually held up where when you're driving people to have to park farther and farther away just to get into their house, it's going to be very dangerous. I think last, a few weeks ago, someone had an AK-47 on my street as well. I live on the Lisa, which is right down the street from this. Also, the fact that this is a state highway and you're going to be making people cross it to go to the parking lot. I don't think this is good for the neighborhood, and I think it's going to make it more difficult for people like me to stay here. Thank you. Karen Bias. Hi, my name is Nathan Hedberg. I live at 1037 Montague. I'm a high school I'm a high school teacher, and I'm also a waiter. Uh, before I begin, I want to draw attention to this map. Every blue dot is a house that is uh, contains over 80 plus residents who have signed a petition petition against the Sun Yard. Um, each of those marks is a story, and here's mine. On February 7th, 2018, my neighbor Steve, Amy, and I were invited to speak with Liz and Giuliano at the Sun Yard property to discuss many of our immediate concerns face to face. There, I found many of my questions evaded or responded to with vague answers. When I criticized the idea of a natural pool, Giuliano, the developer of this project, threatened to, and I quote, knock me the F out. I was horrified. This man, much bigger than myself, physically threatened and verbally assaulted me in front of his wife, his child, and my neighbors. Then according to my landlord, less than two weeks from this day, the developers once again approached my landlord with another offer to buy his house. On behalf of myself, my landlord, and 80 plus immediate neighbors, we fully oppose the Sun Yard development. Please deny this project the conditional use permit required and keep New Orleans for New Orleanians. Hi, my name is Michelle Fristow. I'm at 3031 North Rampart Street. My property backs up to this, uh, adjacent to the Bark Market. Um, there was a statement made at the last CPC meeting that the owners of this property had not tried to purchase anyone else's property on the block. That is completely false. I was approached, and I think if everybody else who was approached would stand up or raise your hand, just to show how many people they have tried to buy out of the neighborhood in order for them to do what they want to do on this property. And when we met with the owners, Liz and Giuliano, uh, myself and two other neighbors, we asked the question, why do you want to do this? Why are you trying to col colonize the block? And the first thing that came out of Giuliano's mouth was, well, when I was a kid, I loved to play Monopoly. Now, if you go by people's first response to questions, this is more like a game to them. This is real life to the rest of us. I ask that you please consider making them work within the current zoning of HDR 3. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we now have about two minutes left to hear from all of the speakers. I ask that each speaker, as you come to the mic, you state your name and address for the record. And you uh, brief. Your name is not. Is there anyone else who was here on February 6th? What's your name, Al? 
いいいともある
of seated indoor space, and this is disruptive to the backyards of adjacent neighbors. The owner refuses to state the maximum occupancy of that outdoor space, or the neighbors to assume that the outdoor crowd will be a fire marshal approved standing density of one person per square foot, feet, or 1,400 people. There is no sound study. The sound engineer has been involved only in site planning. Hiding the maximum outdoor occupancy means a future sound study can be done with only a few outdoor voices, not with maximum occupancy, and this was done previously. Uh, by um, there is no guarantee that the engineer will be involved as changes are made in the design build phases or that the end product will be tested using real world da uh, data. And if he doesn't d stay engaged, he will include in his report, as he did in the Bywater study, that he is not responsible for his work. Um, there's a whole list of things that should be included in a sound study. We were not allowed to discuss this or, or the details with the owner. The provisos are inadequate to protect the neighbors. If by ignoring how the size and nature of the project and intensity of use affects the residents, we are creating neighborhoods suitable only for young yeah, people without time, kids and for tourists. I, I ask the speaker be respectful of the next person speaking behind you, Anthony Jones. No, that's, that won't work. Um, you see me to Elizabeth? Hello, my name is Elizabeth Macy. I own and reside at 1033 Montague Street. My property abuts this development. Many people have made points to the fact that St. Claude is zoned commercial. It is, but the commercial use should benefit the neighborhood. I disagree with Marianne. I do not see how a hotel benefits this neighborhood. We have lost housing we have lost long-term residents we have will lose our peace and quiet and quality of life we will lose the little parking that's left in this area i only see problems arising so much information has been withheld from the neighbors they are unwilling or unable to give us concrete answers to our questions if you could vote to defer this till we get more information. I think that that would be beneficial, but as of now, I feel that they're being very evasive, and I don't trust them, and why would I trust somebody? They're here to make money. I'm here to live my life. I have lived here for a long time on that block. I built my house, restored it with my hands, and now it is being threatened. They have approached all of us to try to buy our homes at above market value. Not a single one of us has sold our homes to this development. We love our neighborhood, we are protecting our neighborhood, and now we are asking you to please protect it for us as well. Their interest is purely monetary. They have no interest in the cultural integrity of New Orleans. They don't live here, they don't reside here. They may say to the other, but Thank they you, don't. Thank you, Ms. Elizabeth, that concludes your time. I do have a follow-up question for you. I have a, a follow-up question with you. So yes. in your remarks, you stated that you didn't necessarily, you don't feel, believe you had all the information, right? No, they have held meetings, yes, but they said they're representing those meetings? Yes, and they send representatives that cannot answer the questions, nor are they responsible. A PR guy, Todd, and their architect, Jason, are not responsible for the ultimate outcome and what happens to the neighbors. And they cannot answer these questions. It is alarming to me that it has been asked over and over, what is your maximum capacity? And they cannot give us a number. It is alarming to me that they will not tell us how many events they want to host and to what frequency. It's been alluded that every weekend that they may have a wedding. So us as neighbors have to listen to a wedding every single weekend? That's completely unfair. Do you think you could support this, um, this, this matter if you had all that information? As a neighbor? No, I oppose this. I don't want to see this from my neighborhood. The quarter has okay. been destroyed and now it's moving its way into the bywater. I don't see this as a benefit. Danielle Meggio?
All right, and you will be taking the, the last minute. Okay, I can minute close it quickly. Uh, my name is Megan Kiefer. I live at 3019 North Rampart, which makes my backyard directly about this proposed development. Um, I echo a lot of comments here, namely the one that says, so many of these people are not just pervasive obstructionists. They, haven't, they have learned to navigate the waters of the CPC zoning because this project is so ill-conceived and half-baked from people who have never run a bar, never run a restaurant, never run a hotel, and now purport to run all three of those things cloaked under uh, entertainment space in our backyards. Questions pointedly asked to the neighbors, or to the developers, have been met with obfuscation, evasion, disdain, and what I heard recently was violence. And to me, that is the most disgusting part of this proposed project, is a concerned neighbor asking questions is being threatened to be knocked the F out. And I think that's all we really need to say here. Thank you so much. Uh, the applicant will now have six minutes for rebuttal. Could you please state for the record how many people did not get a chance to speak today? Mm. That's a fun question. Mm. Yeah, it's speak. Um, okay, so uh, there's obviously been some concerns raised here today. I'm going to try to address them a little bit one by one. Uh, Jason here to, to help me where appropriate. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so noise, right. Um, you know, noise is something we knew about being an issue from the beginning. Uh, Jason touched on it a little bit in terms of how we have moved mechanical equipment around and since we knew it was going to be an issue due to proximity from the beginning, uh, we had hired an acoustician to help us site the buildings in the plant. Also to make recommendations about where to put things like the pool and what we can do along the property lines to help mitigate those issues. Um, Jason can get into more detail if you, if you have questions about specifics on those things. Um, and again, we, we, we did work hard with, with uh, the BNA to try to come up with some ideas that would address those concerns. Um, garbage. We've been hearing about garbage for a while now too. Um, we have agreed, so long as it's okay with all of the city agencies, to, to collect garbage on St. Claude Avenue. Um, we think after further reflection it should be an issue, and that seems to be where neighbors prefer it. Uh, we have stated and are committing to climate controlling and enclosing the garbage for those that are concerned about the smell. And, and as Jason said earlier, we're going to uh, schedule trash collection during regular business hours. Um, you know, at, at, uh, I got two more. So uh, business plan. Um, if people are concerned that we're going to succeed, but people are also concerned that we're going to fail. Um, obviously, it's not in our plan to fail. Um, we are engaging with people that know a lot more than we do about the areas that we don't know about. We have a lot of experience in preservation, managing properties, which is the core of this business. Uh, we're going to get help on the operational stuff from people that know what they're doing. Um, and uh, just, I'm going to let Jason talk about occupancy and then I'll finish. So just quickly, the, uh, the occupancy of the rear yard is regulated by the state fire marshal, obviously. I do want to state that the open space in the rear yard is not 10,000 feet. That is the amount of open space that exists there now. Um, either of the two open yards we have are 2,000 square feet. So um, if you do that math, it's something around 200 occupants potentially. Um, we have, and the applicant has stated publicly to the group that the maximum of in size is anticipated at 125 occupants. And I think if we were to be approved to this body, we could work uh, with the neighbors and city council toward a kind of toward a maximum occupant limit if that is uh, in the interest of the neighbors. Uh, just to touch real briefly on the sound study, um, we have, uh, obviously we come to you in these projects at the very beginning stages of design. 
we have committed multiple times to the neighbors in our forums that we're going, we're committing to that that to being an open process. Um, I wanted to say that for the record, and then just to correct uh, one thing that was said about our BNA support. Um, we met with the Bywater Neighborhood Zoning Committee and the BNA several times. Um, uh, one of uh, two meetings were public. One was at their uh, neighborhood meeting in February, and then we had a meeting with the zoning committee that was publicly advertised and attended by uh, many of the members who are behind us today. So, um, just to be clear, we feel that the BNA support reflects the neighborhood's input, and we have agreed to the use restrictions that we feel are appropriate to address those concerns and to the noise um, abatement plan that will also address those concerns. Thank you. Any questions from any commissioners? Anything else? I, I just want to say, you know, um, we, we, we know that at times the, the, the tone of this conversation has gotten off track. Um, you know, there, there's three sides to every story, and all I can say is that, you know, conversations have gotten personal and they've gotten heated, and, you know, it's very, it's regretful that things have gone the way that they have gone at times. Um, we, we have taken many steps to courts correct, and we've, we've really tried to provide many opportunities to have open and constructive dialogue, uh, gone to everything that we've been asked to go to, attempted to schedule everything that we could you know, individually with people. And, you know, again, we've made significant adjustments to the design in response to that. And uh, thank you again for your time and your consideration. Thank you. Then now closing the public uh, hearing portion of this zone document matter on one day. Are there any comments from any commissioners or a motion? Uh, I'll, ma I'll make a motion and I will give my uh, uh, logic uh, if there is a second. Um, even though it is not my uh, inclination to go against staff recommendations, in this instance I will and I'll give my logic for it in a second. So my, my motion uh, is to decline. Uh, it is to go against the staff recommendation and against uh, the applicant uh, and not approve the request. been moved by Commissioner Weaver for denial of this on the market matter, second by Commissioner Brown. Um, are there any other comments from the commissioner? So I'd be happy to give my thank you. Um, first of all, I want to I want to uh, give my appreciation for the staff. Uh, I think it was an excellent report. Uh, I want to thank the neighborhood uh, for coming out uh, and speaking so strongly. Uh, I also want to thank um, the uh, applicant as an owner and the architect, I will agree with his last comments um, that uh, uh, in in some cases, I think it was unfortunate that that the the people who did the design and and the applicant got got demonized and vilified, and I don't think that that's anyone's goal, and certainly not mine. Um, I will say, as a resident of this neighborhood, uh, and in fact. I know a few people who spend more time in this neighborhood living and working in it. Um, there are properties where this would be an instant go, right? There's the Bywater Hospital. There are uh, low-scale developments around Family Dollar, Dollar General, Holy Angels. In fact, I live uh, adjacent to a property that was once a sausage factory, factory and is now online to become 70 condo units. So this is a neighborhood that, as much as some people would like to see it, cannot be dipped in amber and remain what it is today, tomorrow, right? It's a changing neighborhood. That said, this lot is problematic. The zoning was laid out for a reason, and the attempt to put this into these lots is a moment where it, it feels like it crosses a line to me as a person who has been on this body as we went through all of the zoning and all of the discussions, and that is because it's this classic old New Orleans key lot, it impacts a lot of different people. So if you're dealing with a one-edge property like uh, the Bowler Hospital or Holy Angels, um, I think there wouldn't be an argument. 
but I think when you do something like this, it's endemic of, of the attempt to unsettle the neighborhood from its, its residential history. There was a time that zoning abdicated its responsibility of this neighborhood, which is why we have the pants factory and the sausage factory and the hospital. And th so those lots are, are, are open and up for this uh, and, 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 and are appropriate to be converted and have been into the artist lots and have been into some of the other spaces in our neighborhood. I don't see this as being a mirror property to that. Um, so that is why I made my motion and that is why I am going to support denial. Thank you, Commissioner Weaver. Are there any other comments? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor, um, um, state by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion is carried for denial. If, if you're excellent, please exit quietly. We still have a docket to maintain. If you're leaving, please exit quietly and quickly. Thank you. If you're exiting, please exit quietly. We have to continue our meeting. If you're leaving, please exit quietly. Thank you. Zoning Dockets 2218 is a request for conditional use to permit a parking lot, principal use, and an HMC2 historic Mary Treme Bywater Commercial District, and AC3 Arts and Culture Diversity Overlay District, and AC EC Enhancement Corridor Design Overlay District. Subject site is located on square 401, lots N, R, and S in the 3rd Municipal District. Founded by St. Cloud Avenue, Feliciana, Mariah, and Kluwet Streets. The municipal addresses are, are 3039 to 3047 St. Cloud Avenue and 1111 to 1113 Feliciana Street. The applic applicant's original proposal was to develop the site with a 10,296 square foot parking lot principal use that would provide 20 parking spaces, 12 of which were, are required parking spaces for the proposed 37-room hotel. Since February 6th, the applicant has submitted revised plans. The revised plans indicate that the applicant is proposing to reduce the number of parking spaces in the parking lot at Fosiana Street and St. Cloud Avenue from 20 spaces to 12 spaces. The applicant has also shifted the location of the parking lot to the lake side of the lot with the intention of leaving space for a future commercial development along St. Cloud Avenue. The revised plans indicate that the applicant intends to provide, sorry, since the applicant is proposing to provide only the required parking in the parking lot, the conditional use would not be required since the lot would be considered an accessory parking lot within 300 feet and not a parking lot principal use. Therefore, the application can be withdrawn. However, if the applicant proposes to provide more than the required parking lot, parking in the lot, staff would not be supportive of the request. Staff recommends denial of any conditional use for non-required parking spaces because the lot will not be consistent with the intentions of the plan for the 21st century, century applicable, applicable zoning district regulations and overlays to encourage active pedestrian-oriented uses in the neighborhood. Therefore, the staff recommends denial of zoning docket 2218. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Schmidt? Sure. Justin Schmidt. Uh, 909 Voyager Street, Suite 1500 for the applicant St. Catherine's property. Um, we are a withdrawing, respectfully withdraw that application uh, prior to the City Planning Commission taking any action on it. Uh, I've got an official letter here. For record. Uh, right. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Smith. The applicant has withdrawn zoning docket 2218, therefore the City Planning Commission um, will not take any action as it relates to that zoning docket matter. Just for the record, so we're not challenged on, do we have to vote to suspend the rules to accept that letter? 
probably yes. So I'd like to move to suspend the rules to accept that letter, which I guess addresses the issue of um, withdrawal of the application. Thank you, Commissioner Green. Is there a second? Yes, sir. It's been moved by Commissioner Green to suspend our rules to accept that letter. Second by Commissioner Weinberg. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the motion is carried. Zoning Docket 2918. Zoning Docket 2918 is a request for a conditional rules to permit a standard restaurant in an HUD1 historic urban neighborhood business district. A CPC character preservation corridor design overlay district and the magazine street use restriction overlay district on square 199, lot B in the 6th municipal district. Bounded by Magazine Street, Bordeaux Street, Balance Street, and Constant Street. The municipal address is 4734 Magazine Street. The applicant is proposing to renovate and expand an existing single story wood frame structure on Magazine Street and choose a standard restaurant. This request was deferred at the February 27th City Planning Commission meeting for the applicant to, to modify the massing of the covered porch addition. Addition. The Design Advisory Committee re-reviewed the proposal at its February 21st <coughs> meeting and recommended approval. The staff recommends approval of Zoning Docket 2918 subject to eight provisos. Thank you. Uh, first speaker, speaker John, John Eagle. Antonio My name is Antoine Sachs. I'm the owner. I'm at the property 4734 Magazine Street. Um, I have a clinic adjacent to the proposed um, development that we're um, here for today. Um, I've been practicing here for 15 years since um, 2005. Um, I lost the property there, and um, since then it's also somewhat of a vestige between Balance and um, Bordeaux. That seems uh, to just kind of starting to catch up now, and we're really excited. And I want to thank the staff for um, approving our, our concept, and hopefully we can continue to move forward. Thank you so much. Is there any other good speakers here in support? Anyone else here in support for the zoning act, Commander? Jen Burke, for information purposes only. Yes, uh, yes I'm Jenna Burke at uh, 3219 Britannia, and I I just would like some more um, neighborhood input. I have friends who live right around the corner from here, and I feel like kind of nobody in the area, and I pay a lot of attention to the Treasure Magazine Street and everywhere. Nobody really knows kind of what's going on here, and it looks like a you know, big out yard, outdoor seating from the little article in um, Uptown Messenger that only came out the other day. So um, I, I don't know if a, refer, a deferral is on the table or anything, but um, I think neighbors would appreciate maybe a little bit more time to digest kind of a big change. Um, I know long times across the street, but this is, it would still be pretty significant, so. Thank you, Ms. Burke. Um, is there anyone here to speak in opposition to the zoning document? Is there anyone to speak in opposition to the zoning document? If not, the applicant will have time for a rebuttal. You want to add anything, Mr. Sachs? Um, yes, uh, we have had neighborhood meetings, and everyone that showed up was proponent and very excited about the idea. They're ready to see this part of magazine change because it's been stagnant for quite a while. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. That closes the public hearing portion of this on document matter. Is there any questions or a motion from any commissioners? Um, I move we accept the staff recommendation. It's been moved second. by Commissioner Eisenstein to accept staff um, and second by Commissioner Green. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor of the motion, state by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? <coughs> the motion is carried. I'd like to just thank the applicant for um, what I think is going to be a great development at that particular site, but also to thank you for being in business at that location for so long and wanting to do something in your community. Zoning docket 3218. Zoning docket 3218 is a request by City Council motion M17620 for zoning change from an HURM2 historic urban multifamily residential district and a C1 general commercial district to an MU2 high intensity mixed use district. On square 289, lot 5, <coughs> lots 5, R8, R9, R10, 8, R11 through 15, R16, X8, and F in the first municipal district bounded by South Rampart Street, Clio Street, South Saratoga Street, and Irata Street. The municipal addresses are 1201 to 1219 South Rampart Street and 1210 to 1218 South Saratoga Street. This request was deferred at the February 27th City Planning Commission meeting to allow the City Council to take action on a, master, a pending master plan reconsider, reconsideration for the subject site. Since that time, the applicant submitted a request for a minor map adjust, adjustment to the future land use map to include the entire subject site in the mixed use high density plum designation. After review, the Executive Director of the City Planning Commission issued a determination of denial for the request on March 6th. But subsequently obtained a determination from the Director of Safety and Permits on the meaning of the term minor as used in Section 4.7.E of the CZO. The Safety and Permits Director interpreted 4.7E to state that minor map adjustments must be limited to inconsequential portions of lots to ensure the alignment of such boundaries and property lines which do not constitute a reasonably developable portion of ground and where the adjustment does not expand the portion of a lot within the proposed zoning classification, which is greater than 15% of the portion of the lot from which the district boundary is proposed to be adjusted. Though the CPC's director determination was specific to CZO map amendments, the safety and permits director further opined that 4.7E cannot apply to flum adjustments because the city's home rule charter only authorizes the city council to change the flum. Therefore, the application for the minor map adjustment is not proper, and the Executive Director of City Planning is not authorized to consider granting the request. <coughs> the request is that the applicant proposes to rezone the subject site, consisting of 13 lots. Currently, the site is developed with a standard restaurant, Central City Barbecue, with an outdoor seating area and a former warehouse-type structure. The applicant has placed shipping containers around the outdoor space, and the City Council motion proposes to rezone the subject property to facilitate the restaurant's expansion which is proposed to include outdoor live entertainment. Neither the HURM2 Historic Multifamily Residential District or C1 General Commercial District ally, allows outdoor live entertainment. Therefore, the staff recommends modified approval of the request to change the zoning from an HURM2 and C1 General Commercial District to an MU2 Mixed Use High, high Intensity District to change the zoning classification to an MU2 Mixed Use High Intensity District on lots currently contained within the mixed use high intensity future land use designation, finding that the request meets most of the approval standards contained in Article 4 of the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance, and also for those lots contained within the mixed use high intensity future land use designation, the request is uh, consistent with the master plan. Thank you so much. And we have one speaker. Nicole Weber, um, 2131 Bienville Street, 2348 St. Thomas Street. I'm here representing the property owners, um, Central City Barbecue. I'm asking for deferral today. Um, as you can see in the map, and as I believe Kelly touched on, um, the property has a portion of former DOTD uh, land that they purchased from DOTD in December 2016, so it's no longer public land. It was um, supposed to be an off-ramp for the expressway, and that idea was abandoned um, about 20 or so years ago. So my clients have purchased that property, and now we're kind of in limbo because the property is zoned one way, and the, the future land use map has it 
broken up in half. So right now I'm working with city planning and with safety and permits to, um, to try to mitigate that and adjust the map lines through a minor map adjustment. So that's why I'm here today asking for a deferral, please. Thank you, Ms. Weber. And what meeting would you like to defer to? Uh, to the next meeting, if that's possible. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Weber. Um, is there anyone else here to speak in support for this on the matter? If not, we'll move to opposition. Is there anyone here to speak in opposition? If not, we have to close the, the public hearing portion for this only document matter. Um, and I'll ask for a motion from, from one of our commissioners. Commissioner Stewart? Yes. May I add something? Oh. Um, I know the applicant requested a deferral to the next meeting. We would like to request at the meeting the um, two meetings to give us time to review this. So the first April meeting, if that would be okay with the applicant. Thank, thank you. Me. Thank you so much. Motion to defer to the first meeting in April. It's been moved by Commissioner Weaver for the deferral to the first meeting in April. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Brown. Is there any discussion on the motion? If not, I'll call a question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried for deferral to the first meeting in April. On to new business. Zoning docket 3418. Zoning docket 3418 is a request for a text amendment to the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance to consider the following amendment to section 24.14.A relative to billboard permits. Provided that the applicant meets the requirements for a billboard port permit per section 24.14a of these regulations, any person or the city may apply for a conversion permit of an existing non-conforming structure for an existing sign as of the date of the adoption of this ordinance for the purposes of erecting, constructing, or converting an animated electronic display screen or electronic message sign in a zoning district wherein formerly prohibited. Additionally, prior to the approval of any sign permit, said applicant shall agree to the demise of five existing sign structures and, self, and shall submit an updated inventory list, including a site plan showing the location of the billboard with GPS coordinates, a photograph of the billboard, a description of the size and type of the billboard, and all contact information for the owner of such billboard along with all requirements of the billboard permit to the director of the Department of Safety and Permits. Permittees shall continue to provide annual updated inventory lists as required pursuant to section 24.14E of these regulations. This amendment would add additional provisions to Article 24.4 or section 24.14 billboards to allow existing non-conforming billboards to electrify, i.e. convert to digital billboards. However, this permission would be dependent on the discontinuation of five other existing legal non-conforming billboards. In its preliminary review of the policy change, the staff has noted that there are other communities in the U.S. that have adopted similar sign ordinance rel related to the digital conversion of existing non-conforming traditional fixed billboards. The CPC staff is supportive of such a policy because of its potential benefits in terms of the reduction in the net number of non-conforming billboards, the rehabilitation of older billboards, fuel and material savings, in addition to many other benefits. However, the staff has found numerous legal and policy implications with regards to the proposed text amendment, which did not appear to be resolved within the motion at hand. Therefore, the staff is recommending deferral of the request to allow for more time to discuss some of these legal ramifications with various stakeholders. Therefore, the staff recommends deferral of zoning docket 3418 to the April 10th, 2018 City Planning Commission meeting. Thank you so much. Are there any speakers for the zoning document? Anyone here to speak in support or opposition? Yes, I filled out a card. Michael Duplantier, 820 Barone Street. I put myself in opposition because I'm not really sure where this was coming from, and I, I, I tend to agree with the staff on this. I don't know whether I'm for it or against it. I certainly would like to have five boards come down, but one giant non-conforming digital billboard 
adjacent to a neighborhood is probably a lot worse than five small non-conforming billboards that nobody ever sees that the industry would love to take down. Um, so I don't know if this is a fair trade-off or not, and there's frankly no criteria written in this motion. It's a very poorly worded motion, by the way. I don't know what, agree to the demise? What the heck is that? I have no idea what that means. Um, agreeing to it and doing it are actually two different things, as you might imagine. So this motion is terribly written. Um, and there are a lot of legal implications here. One other thing I wanted to say, it's been, and I was on the committee, so I well remember it, it's been more than 25 years since we've had a comprehensive look at billboards in this city. We didn't do it a few years ago when we redid the ordinance. I was told at that time we didn't want to touch that. Uh, it's probably time to touch it. The industry has changed, the, the technology has changed, everything has changed since 1992 when this ordinance was written by Stephen Rutledge and, and a few of us here at the Planning Commission at that time. I think a comprehensive look is in order, frankly, and uh, we shouldn't go around allowing any more giant digital billboards uh, at this time without a, a, a comprehensive look at the implications of that. Thank you. Thank you so much for those comments. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to the zoning docket? Mr. Chairman, with no additional comments. I had a question. Oh, yeah, for, yeah. Um, before we vote on whether we're deferring this, there was there were discussions um, when we did design ordinance about, for lack of a better word, a cap and trade or whatever, and there were reasons that we couldn't go there for the, and the gentleman took the words out of my mouth as far as the question, and wondering where the genesis of this motion was because I couldn't understand where what what prompted this from the council. So, um, so I think this motion comes directly from those conversations you were, you were mentioning a few years ago. Um, and Mr. Mr. Planche is, is exactly right. We did have conversations as we were doing the CZO. Um, the CZO was moving faster than those conversations, which is why we didn't complete those conversations and let the, the regulations as they were. Um, since the CZO was completed, um, neither our office nor the billboard industry has, has initiated any further conversations until this motion came along. Um, it was presented by a um, council member in, in, on behalf of um, one of the uh, billboard companies, uh, and the idea is to um, essentially enable a current non-conforming, non-digital billboard to be upgraded to a digital billboard in return for removing some of the what we call HD billboards from neighborhoods um, that uh, I think everyone agrees um, we would like to see fewer of. I think the, the concerns that we have as staff are similar to those that have been expressed by Mr. Planche. There's very little uh, specificity in the motion um, and, and I think there needs to be a lot more detail, a lot more limitations, a lot more thought put into how something like this would move forward if it moves forward. So that's, we just wanted to take a little more time to do that. And, and from what I remember, this might also allow us to actually have a, a better idea of the inventory of billboards in the city as well, because I think that was one of the other questions we weren't sure of that when we had these discussions. Yeah, when we, when we did have that conversation, we did put an inventory together. Um, it is, um, it probably needs to be updated since 2015, um, but we do have it. We have a layer um, on the city's GIS with all of them um, geocoded, um, linked to photographs, um, and, and that's based on information that was provided to us from all of the uh, major billboard carriers. So, and that's the idea is that we will tie that into the licensing of billboards, so it can be much easier to keep track of them um, on an annual basis. So, um, so yes, I think that that is all part of our city's conversation. I regret that I didn't see the um, inventory, but are some of them privately owned, just a individual? Well, I, and I, you're right, private is not the word, not by one of the major billboard companies. Because what I'm questioning is, I guess, um, since we continue the discussion, I guess, is um, how can you order five billboards to be removed if you don't own them? You're raising one. Oh, that is the question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, and that's exactly what you mean. Okay. So, so the, the company that has. Five. I thought I was missing. The, the company that has initiated this is, is a company with a number of larger 
billboards and a number of smaller billboards. So they do have an inventory that they control that they want to give up on some of the smaller ones and enhance some of the larger ones. There are companies that don't have that broad of an in inventory, so they won't have some to trade off of. And, and, um, and so we are, we are definitely looking into those different scenarios and see how this would, uh, would impact. There are also, I think you were talking about, there are some individual uh, property owners who own an individual billboard um, that is not um, controlled by any of the companies. They may have someone manage it for them, but it's their own billboard. And, and again, we do need to kind of uh, look deeper into that scenario and figure out how this would affect it. Yeah, this is just an obvious thing as it's being studied, and I know that you all are going to do a good job. But I would hate to see, and I know it won't happen because you all are involved, but is that some company can order a private owner through city ordinance to have to get rid of these billboards because of the ordinance that it's written. That's all. And, and I know you all know. So, um, But I, unfortunately, I see that behind some of this language. But, okay. We've already had lots of Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Green, for that. You want to sum it up in the, in the motion for us? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, this line. I looked up, I googled um, um, illuminated by advertising to see what came up. And there are a lot of recent advertisements for Mobile Cube. And I, and I noticed that just in the past few weeks, I've seen several trucks pass me by that on three sides are flashing. It's very distracting when I'm driving. And so this clearly is something uh, on the cusp of. And I think it's really important for us to get ahead of it, rather than it get ahead of us. And I really appreciate your comments that it needs to be approached from a comprehensive view, rather than one proposal, which most likely is, you know, is preemptive and is, will set us up in a way that I, I, I really dislike, like billboards and I think they're visual pollution. So, so yeah, I, th I think what we're going to be looking at is. I, I've seen a number of those mobile ones, the, the trucks with lots of lights on them. Um, unfortunately, it's not something we can regulate in the zoning ordinance, um, but I think they're um, probably some code or um, you know, traffic safety um, issues that need to be regulated. But we will be looking at the ones that are fixed in station. If there are no additional comments, Mr. Chair from um, members of the public of the board, I'd like to move for the referral of um, item 34, 18, what's the number? Sorry, sorry, you're right. 34, 34, 18 to the April 10th meeting. Okay, it's been moved by Commissioner Green for the referral to April 10th. Is there a second on the motion? Second. It's been seconded by Commissioner Brown. I'll just check with staff if there's April 10th, April 10th works. Yes. Okay. Um, any other discussion on the motion? Bravo on the public comments, Mr. Duplache. That was well said. Very well said. I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion is carried. Next zoning docket 3518. The next item is zoning docket 3518 for a property located at 1917 to 1919 Jackson Avenue. This is a request for a zoning change from an HULM1 Historic Urban Multifamily Residential District to an HUMU Historic Urban Mixed Use District. The applicant has requested the zoning amendment in order to develop a vacant site with a mixed use structure with a ground floor office and residential space above. The zoning change is not allowable under the master plan because the property has no apparent history of commercial use. The master plan the future land use designation for the site allows commercial use only where current or former commercial use is verified. Sanborn maps document, document a residential use in the site dating back to the 19th century, which has since been demolished. Given that the site has no apparent history of commercial use, it is not eligible for commercial zoning under the master plan. In addition to being inconsistent with the master plan, the zoning change would result in a loss of residential land at this site and would not protect adjacent residential districts from the encroachment of incompatible non-residential uses into an established HURM1 historic urban multifamily residential district 
Therefore, the staff recommends denial of zoning docket 3518. Thank you so much. I received one card for the speaker, and that is. So, so you will have four minutes. Um, good afternoon. My name is Dasmin Wolf. Thank you for your time. Um, we're asking, um, me and my, my partner Michael sitting there, um, we're asking for this change um, because um, Michael is an entrepreneur and it's his dream to have an office space, a cheap office space where entrepreneurs can, can work together and share their network as well as be um, moral support for each other. Um, as one might know, it's hard being an entrepreneur. You're spending a lot of time alone fighting your battles and being in an office space where you can work with other people um, and talk about your problems and have lunch together um, makes it a lot easier and and therefore we think it's going to be good for the local economy to have more entrepreneurs who want to start local businesses um, and um, one of the concerns that that was that was mentioned was that this is not um, that this is part of a residential neighborhood but it's it's next to the, the lots around it are all um, they do have this commercial earmark so it, it won't be disruptive um, besides that, um, on, uh, it's going to also have resi um, residential space. Nobody's going to be displaced because right now the lot isn't being used, so it only creates more room for people to live instead of, of less. Um, parking is not going to be a problem. Um, we met with neighbors and there was no, um, no objections. Um, so we've therefore asked to reconsider and, and allow us to, um, you know, to, to start this um, office space. Um, it's been our, our dream for Michael and um, he has a lot of, met a lot of people during the um, Nuola Entrepreneur Week who will be interested in, in sharing this space with him. So um, we would hope that um, you would look favorable upon our request. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is there any other speakers in support? Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Feltz. Uh, I'm, I'm the architect in charge of the project, and uh, I've been retained by, by Mr. Michael. And uh, it's extremely good um, uh, project that he's planning to do. The first, the first floor is going to be open for his his office and the second uh, floor going to be a residential area for for him too. So it's a uh, it's adequate and it fit the character of the neighborhood. It's gonna it's gonna look uh, like a resident and he's not altering the 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 community or altering the traffic in the area. So we had a um, neighborhood um, meeting. Uh, most of the people say that the project generally fits the scale and is in character with the neighborhood. And uh, we had a lot of approval because it's, it's look, a, look like a home uh, business, which is what we're planning to do. So I'm here in favor of the project. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in support of this zoning documenta? If not, um, I don't see any other cards, but is there anyone to speak in opposition to this zoning document? Anyone to speak in opposition? If not, they will cl close the public hearing portion um, of this zoning document matter. Is there um, a question um, by any commissioner or any motion? Well, I guess um, prior to making a motion, I would like to ask the applicant uh, if they had looked at other properties where this might be um, allowed, the use that you're proposing, or was this already owned? I, I'm sorry. I, I Did you look at other properties where this might have been allowed as a permitted use, the zoning classification? Oh. Was this property? Yeah. Um, 
Um, no, no, we 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 own we bought this land a while ago, and and um, we initially thought it had the commercial um, stamp on it, and when we realized it didn't, we we tried to. Uh, now we're in the process of applying for it. It's more us being a little bit naive as first time doing this and not realizing we thought that the commercial line was just on the other side. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Any other commissioner or any motion? Well, I'm going to make a motion, and as much as I, I think the project looks great, and I'm sure the building would be nice as well, unfortunately, uh, zoning is forever, and this would be, um, the, the project that they're proposing, I'm sure would not be adverse, uh, have an adverse impact on the neighbors, but what could possibly go there later if, if they were to move. Um, could, and, and because the reasons stated in the staff report, I am moving denial because of its inconsistency with the master plan and it being spot zone. It's been moved by Commissioner Brown for um, for approval of staff report for the now. Is there a second on the motion? There's a second by Commissioner Run for for uh, denial. Is there any other questions or comments on the motion? It's a little bit difficult because um, exactly what Commissioner Brown um, states is a fact. But um, in this particular instance, I'm moved by the lack of opposition and also the fact that it's located so close to um, the district that would make it possible. Um, I don't usually um, say it this easily, but it, I am persuaded by the fact that there is not opposition. I recognize we have five people here, and I know what's going to happen. It's probably going to go to the council, but I'm going to vote against it only because I think that the applicants, um, in sincerity and in an area that supports what they want to do, apply for, um, you know, purchased it. And I think that it doesn't have a tremendous impact on the neighborhood, which is why I think there's not opposition. Thank you, Commissioner Green. Is there any other comments? If not, I'll call the question. Um, it seems that we're going to be kind of split on this one, so I'll ask commissioners to hold their hands, hands up. So if you're in support of the motion by Commissioner Brown, please raise your hand. And if you oppose, so that brings our tally to four to one, which would basically, um, the motion would just go up with no recommendation to city council unless, oh. No, I was just going to explain the update that we need five votes to carry any action, so we only receive four, so we'll have to go to the council with no recommendation. Okay. So it will go to city council with no recommendation. Next zoning docket matter. Zoning docket 03618 is a request by 3821 Moray Manor LLC for a conditional use to permit a neighborhood commercial establishment in an HURD2 historic urban two family residential district on square 474, lot K in the 3rd Municipal District, bounded by Murray Street, Pauline Street, Alvar Street, and Urquhart Street. The municipal address is 3821 Murray Street. The petition site is developed with a one-story, non-residential structure built between 1908 and 1937. There are no proposed increases to the building footprint, however, minor exterior modifications such as awnings and new code-compliant steps and a railing are proposed. The applicant has indicated that the proposed use of the space, if approved, would be an art gallery, a use recognized under the Neighborhood Commercial Establishment category. Neighborhood Commercial Establishments are conditional uses in the HURD2 district 
The proposed art gallery would make up the entirety of the structures approximately 14,000 square feet, or 1,400 square feet, excuse me, and include gallery space, restrooms, and a warming kitchen. A patio in the rear yard of the property would host occasional events. The staff believes that the proposed use is consistent with the general purpose and intent of the applicable zoning district regulations and would reestablish a low intensity commercial use on site, bringing a vacant property back into commerce. In addition, staff found that the proposal is consistent with the master plan. Therefore, staff is supportive of the application and recommends approval of zoning docket 03618, subject to seven provisos. Thank you so much. One chord. I have no cards in support. Is there someone who's I did have a blank card. All right. You hear support, Bobby? Okay. Please come up. Bobby Bordelon and my daughter Kelly Williams are going to uh, run the art gallery. My daughter's going to run it. I'm a CPA, so I don't have time. But, um, but the I'm sorry, 7806 Dominican Street. And this is Chris. Sorry. Hi, I'm Christine Scholl with Terrell Fallbacher Architects. Um, Hi, Christine. Uh, 1424 Crete Street, 70119. Um, and I'm here representing the owner. Um, and I. We just wanted to um, thank uh, the staff for um, helping us get through this process and um, we've had a lot of questions and um, just mean to say that yes that it's consistent with the master plan and we appreciate that. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in support? If not, we'll move on to the opposition. I have two cards for opposition. Um, the first one, Denise Strong. I'm Denise Strong. I'm at 1127 Alvar. My opposition is based on a concern about the uh, possible permitted usages under neighborhood commercial establishment namely restaurants and any other kind of activity that is not as low intensity as a stereotypical art gallery might be. We're right across the street from a school. We are a very quiet neighborhood uh, area and um, events such as receptions or parties or other kinds of usages in this space, which I believe might be allowed would be a concern. So that's the basis of the opposition. And then I heard, I thought I heard something about provisos, but I didn't hear what those specific were. And I have a hearing challenge, so it's very difficult for me to hear. What would specifically mitigate your concerns? Not allowing those uh, uses. uses. Or, because I know like the, the, the art walk on St. Claude happens once a month. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, because I live in the neighborhood too. So it, it happens, but it's also not every night, it's not every day. And you have the school across the street, so you have the parking, things that are happening daily anyway. Is there something specific? Is it going late into the night? Is it every night? That's the concern. Okay. That that those kinds of events not be allowed and that that'd be very specific. Is there a time that like ten o'clock, like like that that would that would make you feel better about it? As a no, cutoff, yeah. ten o'clock as a cutoff. Yeah, that would yeah. That would, that would but late night parties, receptions, you know, those kinds of things, people spilling out in the street, drinking, we don't want that. Yeah, can the owner speak to how you're intending to use the property and, and those kinds of, of concerns? Sure. Um, and I think it, even that, um, I'll agree. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Can we do it the opposition? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Well, well, that was. I think I expressed my concerns, and so if you could have those addressed, okay, that would be helpful. Thank you. But one of the providers, I apologize, was, Jim, is that it closed at ten, right? Yes. Right. So that is. I, I just want to make it clear up. that one of the provisos, if this is approved without change, is that it has to close at ten. Okay. And so I presume that the applicant has agreed to that. Probably. 
Okay. Next speaker in opposition, Benita Blair. My name is Benita Blair. I live at 1230 Albert Street. And the concern that she has is basically when we were invited to the meeting in November, first of all, it was black. They didn't have lighting and we were standing up and it was very uncomfortable. And so we really couldn't stay that long. But what was told to us, I don't know which uh, person told us, which woman, because it really, I didn't even know these ladies were sitting next to me because that's how close they are watching me today. And I could tell you what they looked like that night. But, uh, and the building really is, is fixed up. That's not the building anymore. That building is fixed up inside and out. Now, what was told to us about the art gallery, we didn't have a problem with art gallery. You bring a certain type of people that come around, which is okay. And it, and it does bring uh, favor to the area. But what was actually said to me and, and a few of our other neighbors that couldn't make it today because they work was sometimes we'll rent it out as a home. That's what she's trying. We don't, we don't want that. We don't want a, a rent, a hall rental. Now, if there's some way that you can put in there, like a spot zone, if the art gallery is agreed like uh, staff recommends, art gallery only, because we know that they flip-flop with different LLCs within the last two years or less. It has been bouncing around in three different LLCs back and forth. And we know that somebody else can come back and say, well, we want to open up this and this name and that and that name. We do not want it rent it out as a hall. We don't have a problem with the art gallery. We don't have a problem with that. But a hall is something that we don't need in the, in the neighborhood. And that's what we are mainly concerned about anything else other than an art gallery. Thank you. Uh, and Ms. Blair, I think specifically you mean not just a hall, but using it for any type of reception or any right. type of any events outside of the art gallery. We know, that they, we know that they will have, you know, like a uh, uh, maybe wine and cheese that they'll serve at the art gallery and you know things of that nature we understand that but anything other than that art gallery and they have the only reception under the art gallery and no hall rental are well, we looking for the art, art gallery we're not looking for a, a hall rental there because we know what type of elements can come in the area i don't care who you are and whatever we are looking for no Reception hall for no wedding, no birthdays, no parties like that. Art gallery, we don't mind in that. We don't mind that because that is better for the community other than anything else. And that's our problem. Thank you, Ms. Lee. You're welcome. Just to clarify with staff, I don't believe a reception hall is allowed or permitted in that zoning classification, is it? You know, it's not. Um, and so a standalone reception hall wouldn't be allowed. Um, as the speaker mentioned, art you know, art galleries often serve wine with with you know during a showing. Um, and so, you know, it's certainly within your discretion to add provisos restricting this to solely an art gallery and saying no special events shall be allowed, something along those lines if you see fit. Any other questions for staff? If not, the applicant has time for rebuttal. Um, well, let's see. First of all, I'll address the meeting. Um, obviously, the building has no power and no air conditioning or heating. So, to have it at a convenient time, it was daylight. It was getting dark. We did, I did at the last minute get some construction lights to plug in. But I apologize for that. But that's all we have. We, we weren't going to spend any money until we know we or have permission to do this. Um, and second of all, I don't, I don't know who she talked to, but I mean, I, I specifically said, as y'all well know, if you have an art gallery, you are going to have events. And I think one of their concerns was serving, uh, concerns was, uh, serving alcohol. And I said there would probably be alcohol served if you have an art showing we plan to have. Um, we have two local artists that are participating in, in finding um, art to display there and we'll have a, a community market which could be spilled over to the backyard and inside so there will be um food and drinks served at events like that um and, that, and you know I would, this is obviously a business so i'd hate for us to be limited um, by certain rules 
you know, not allowing us to do some of those things, and that would be part of our decision whether we would go along. We're we, we're leasing the building, so we're doing the um, we're spending I'm spending the money to improve the building, so I've got to get my money back some way. So there's going to have to be. Uh, I don't. I'll talk to a lot of art galleries. You, you don't make all your money just on the art. You have to have events there to to get people in to look at the art to to get um, you know people interested in it. So that's uh, did that answer. Was there any other concern you had? I, I have a question for you. Can you step the mic? Um, so were you planning on having like wedding receptions or? We have not planned on doing that. Um, uh, you know, again, it depends on how much. I hate to say this, but how much money you make during the, um, you know, doing the art gallery, and, and can we cover our cost of operating the facility? Um, again, it is leased, so if it doesn't work, we'll we'll, we'll move out. But, but, um, but I guess the real intent is plan on operating the art. art gallery. Yes, oh, yes, the real intent is to be an art gallery. And like I said, I do have two local artists. Um, my company also has a, a office here, and art is really we have a lot of local artists displayed in our office so it's important to us to um, do that too. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, please get the mic. I think Commissioner Weaver had and a question for questions staff questions. On, this, on this issue. If, if it's approved as an art gallery, you couldn't flip its use over to be a, a uh, uh, event space, correct? Correct. There are certain uses, uses within the neighborhood commercial establishment designation. It right. does not include uh, event space. Right. So it has to be tied to whatever's going on with the art gallery. Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. sure. If the commission wanted, they could further tailor neighborhood commercial establishment, which is the conditional use request. I think there's like eight listed. You could put a proviso that said it is limited to art gallery. That closes the public hearing portion for um, this only documenta. Um, any other comments, questions for staff, or a motion from any commissioner? I'll make a motion. I move to approve um, the staff's recommendation for approval with the provisos in the report with the additional one to limiting the commercial establishment uh, to art gallery um, and um, I'm looking at the other provisos. It looks like that all of the others would mitigate the concerns of their neighbors. But this looks like a nice project. And, um, I move to approve. Thank you so much, Commissioner, Commissioner Brown. Is there a second to that motion? I will second that motion with a question, though. I, I second it. The question, however, is there are certain uses permitted under the neighborhood commercial establishment designation. So are we saying that of all those, there's only one now, for example, number one art gallery, that it can never be used again for any other particular use? Another desire under the neighborhood commercial establishment would require an amendment to the existing conditional use approved by the council. Can I ask a question? Actually, the, the public hearing portion is, is, is closed, but just for, for clarity, if a commissioner would like that, answer the question. I'll, I'll, I'll ask the question. If, 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 your question was regarding the definition of the commercial establishment? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, okay. um, I, I guess I'm speaking more for the owners of the property. Um, so if it's zone art gallery, and let's say it doesn't work and we our lease expires and the owners still have the building can the owners i mean would the owners come back to request another okay it's not like forever they can't come back and request another use they can come back with an art gallery which is approved uh-huh right they can come back and amend. okay uh, they're the owners aren't here but um i do know them i don't want them to be trapped so i just want to make sure that i understood what you're saying they can ask. Okay, perfect. That's it. Thank you. Um, the motion remains. Gosh, I have a concern. Could, Commissioner Brown, could you state your motion? Um, one more time for the record. Move to approve <coughs> per the staff's recommendation with art gallery being the defined. Uh, the, uh, 
art, limiting the use to art gallery on proviso number four, is that correct? No, no it's a, it would just be the additional It would just be the proviso. additional proviso. With the additional proviso to art gallery, the, the, the lim, limiting the use to an art gallery. Did I muddy that or did I make that clear? <laughs> Well, I just have a concern that um, as we go out and think about it, we're limiting someone who's not here. I've always had a concern about um, limiting uses of a particular address when the owner himself is not here. And I don't think that he or she would have been prepared that this is what was going to happen today. I, I think, Commissioner Green, I'll say to that, this is the actual owner of the property you're speaking of, or the owner of the property. Um, the app, the this application is set for by the applicant, so this pertains primarily to the, their intended use for the property at this time. But the property owner could then actually come back um, and re make another re a request. So it, it's not it's well certainly, but it could be two years from now, and we might not be on it. And then we've limited an owner's use to only an art gallery, where prior to that he could use it for a an office or for a specialty restaurant. I think the building owners have to submit another application. Which could be denied because we have that power. I would suggest that um, currently there is no approval of approval use for this measure any of these items. So this approval would be to expand the ability to use the property just for the like to the one additional use. I, think, I, think I just hate to affect somebody's property when they're not here. However, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I, have a, I, have, I have one question for staff. Um, in looking over it in that art gallery and an art studio, what would be the different types in art gallery versus art studio? One is for showing art, one is for painting art. Painting? Things like that inside. <laughs> so what? So would an art studio prohibit live painting or art classes to stand for? It's really workspace, I think, would be what a studio is. Um, and class would kind of elevate it to a different use. Is, is, is that at all the desire of the, the applicant? I mean, I, I, I got we don't plan on using okay. it to for artists to paint. This for displaying the art. Now, I, you have your point. If, do we, can, if, if we are having artists display and they decide we want to offer a kids art class, you know, to the school across the street, is that prohibited in an art studio? It's not like a big art. It's not like paint and everything. You know what I'm saying? I'm just asking. I just, we don't have plans to do that, but I'm just curious. It would be prohibited in an art gallery. I think you would need to speak yeah. with the Department of Safety and Currency okay. and Interpretation. Okay. So, are we back where we started with the motion? Um, I'm, I'm in play. <laughs> Commissioner uh, Brown, would you accept a friendly amendment to include art studio? Certainly. And, and just, um, again, this conditional use application, if approved, uh, or recommended by this commission is only addressing what's been requested as it stands. None of these conditional uses are um, allowed by this current property owner. So I don't feel we're limiting the property owner with this motion. So um, I'm, I'm happy to expand that uh, use as uh, additional proviso and add art gallery and art studio as uses um, the only uses for this conditional use. Is there a second by Commissioner Green? To that? Second. 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 All right, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion carries. Next zoning docket 3718. Zoning docket 3718 is a request by City Council motion number M-17-621 for conditional use to permit the retail sale of package of alcoholic beverages in an HU-MU Historic Urban Neighborhood Mixed-Use District 
an HUC Historic Urban Corridor Use Restriction Overlay District, and an EC Enhancement Corridor Design Overlay District on square 39, lot A or 8 in the 4th Municipal District, bounded by Jackson Avenue, Willow Street, Josephine Street, and South Claiborne Avenue, would permit the sale of packaged alcohol beverages for the off-premises consumption in an approximately 1,300 a 50 square foot retail food store that is in operation on Jackson Avenue. Should the request be approved, the applicant would be allowed to devote only a small portion of the retail groceries floor area to the display of alcoholic beverages. Due to the site's proximity to a church use, the proposed use is subject to restrictions of city code section 10-237 regarding the size of the display. Only approximately 135 square feet of floor area could be dedicated to the sale of packaged alcohol. The petition site is located in an HUMU neighborhood district that is the spot zone that occupies a full lot on the corner of Jackson Avenue and Willow Street. It is located in an area that is primarily residential with nearby churches and the occasional cor corner store with close proximity to South Claiborne Avenue's commercial corridor. The, request, the requested use is not specifically addressed by the plan for the 21st century but is not inconsistent with the future land use designation. The sale of packaged alcohol is not inherently different than the sale of other food and drink beverage products, and it is appropriate if responsibly managed. Therefore, staff can support the recommendation and recommends approval of zoning docket 3718, subject to two provisos. Thank you so much. Is there anyone um, here to speak in support of this zoning document? Is there anyone here to speak in support is there anyone to speak in opposition? Yes. Well, mostly clarification. My name is Pam Russell, and I own a property at 2217 Willow Street. I also own 2622 and 2624 Jackson Street. So I have multiple properties in the area, so specifically my Willow property. My concern is the having alcohol, more alcohol than is already in this area, and the crime specifically within one, two, and three blocks of here. There is a church catacornered across the street, across the, directly across the street, or church, church housing. And this is a very, very busy corner where crime has become a major issue. And anything that makes a contribution or that is in any way contributes to that has got to be is opposed by me. And, and I've the minister doesn't even, he probably knows about it, but he's not here, and I would be representing him as well in this regard. I have a question. Did the owner of the property reach out to you? No, or any I, just, neighbors? I just got the notice from the city. Okay, and um, question for staff. This came to us through council motion, I believe. Um, do we know the purpose or why this was the case? So I can't say, I cannot say why it was initiated by council motion outside, or rather than private application. Um, you know, the, the business person is a small business owner, and I'm speculating that perhaps there was some need to help them through the process. Um, but, but I really can't provide any additional information aside from that. So, Just one additional point. There is a constant flow of people around that. And that's my biggest concern, is that they get the alcohol and then they're out on the corner of the street. And no, I was not brought up. Thank you. Um, I have a question for staff. Since it was done by council motion, um, was a neighborhood community meeting held? Yeah, there was a neighborhood participation plan. There was a neighborhood participation program meeting, which is a meeting held by the applicant prior to the public hearing on the application. And so the applicant or the store owner submitted documentation of having held a meeting, I believe, on February 20th of the application. Um, well, being the owner of a property of 50 feet, 75 feet away, I was not there and, and down the street as well, so no, that I was never notified. I only, you guys notified me. And that's okay. the reason I'm here. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find that um, sign-in sheet, I believe. It looked like one person was there. I'm not sure. Um, can you refer me to a page? Do you all know? Sure. So that there was two meetings. Um, okay. 
there was mm -hmm. the initial one that was not properly noticed and only a couple people signed into that. There's a second sign-in sheet, which is the second to last page. Uh, and, and there's an image of the sign-in sheet provided by the property owner, and, and that shows who signed into that meeting. How many people were at that meeting? The sign-in sheet that I'm looking at shows 15 to 20 names on the list. me I still have a real issue of not knowing about this and having someone say that they had meetings and I as a property owner that close never was noticed. I'm sorry, what was your name for the record again? My name is Pam Russell and my company is NOLA MFR L Strategy LLC and I own three properties within a block of this and I'm there all the time and can attest to it's not good. The notices are mailed, I'm sorry, I should know this. The notices are mailed to the property or the owner? To the property, right? To, to, to the resident and the owner. It, okay. In both the end case of the MPP and the city planning provided notice, it, it goes, it, at least it should go to both the occupant and the property owner. Okay. Well, just for the record, I know someone who attended the hearing on um, the MPP, and that's why I'm asking. He knew about it. He owns the property on Jackson Avenue. I'm sorry that you didn't. It, um, that's that's just a comment. I want to clarify. That's the first time I've ever asked that it goes to the taxpayer's record and also the tenant. That's all. Okay, so um, the applicant is not here for uh, rebuttal, so they close the public hearing portion for the zoning docket matter. Any comments or any other questions from any other commissioners or a motion? I have consistently said, and I don't know where this will go, but the very availability of alcoholic beverages does not portend loitering. Alcoholic beverages are sold at the lounge that's on Claiborne, that's sold at the Shell Station, and there are no problems with loitering or hanging out. As staff often mentions involving alcoholic beverages, um, it depends on the management. And I think staff through their communications, limiting the amount of beverage that can be sold um, to 135 square feet, and also to the public process where there was an opportunity for people to have a real say in relative, relative to whether they thought it was a good idea or not. The reason that this is before us is because there's a church near the facility and no one from the church has objected to this particular um, location having 135 square feet of um, alcoholic beverage outlet. I know that alcoholic beverage um, consumption many times triggers emotion but there is just no fact um, available that suggests or no study that shows that people dwell at a location outside just because it sells alcohol. So with that in mind I, I move motion to um, accept. I move to accept the staff recommendation on um, zoning docket thirty-seven eighteen. It's been moved by Commissioner Green for accepting the staff report. I will second for purposes of discussion, but um, I don't intend to support the motion. But I would like to um, address the staff's recommendation, which, I, 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 of course, the, the report as always was well written and and thoroughly thought out, and, and normally I would agree, but um, alcohol sales rely on um, responsible management, and I don't see the owner here, neither the application signed off by the owner, so I'm, that gives me enough pause to see that perhaps provisos would not be enough to mitigate the adverse effects to the neighbors. So, I'm, while seconding the motion, um, I do not intend to support it. Any other comments? Ms. Lund? I'm sorry. Ms. 
Yeah. 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 I just like to say I, I had the same concern or similar concern that an owner who would put this forth uh, would not be here. And that the only person here has stated that there are a number of people who will already linger. And so if management is one of the main concerns with regard to adding alcohol as one of their sales items, then we have an advisor so far it's not a good indication that this would be a good place to add the al sale of alcohol as beverages. Thank you. Uh, are there any other comments from any other commissioners? If not, I'll call the question. I'll ask that we show um, by hands um, due to the I uh, think we're going to have some difference of opinions on this um, zoning docket. So if you're in favor um, of the motion, um, please raise your hand. If you're opposed, please raise your hand. So it's two to three. The motion uh, will move to city council with, with no uh, decision. Uh, due to the fact that we don't have a legal majority um, of five commissioners voting in favor of the motion, it just moved to the city council um, with no decision. My first time here, one question is, is my name now part of the records? And the owner's going to see that I object to this. You, you filled out a card? No. Can you fill out the card and just say your name? Yes, that's, that's what I want to do. <laughs> But no, I will, and I'll be back. I'll have the minister with me. Next, on, uh, moving on to subdivision docket 00518. Subdivision docket 00518 is a request to resubdivide lot 11A into lots 11A1 and 11A2 on square 382 in HMR 3 historic manager made by water residential district. The proposal would reconfigure the existing approximately 6,340 6, square foot lot into two lots, one approximately 3,772 square feet with double frontage uh, along Henriette de Lille and Columbus Streets, and one approximately 2,572 square feet corner lot fronting along Henriette, Henriette de Lille and Columbus Streets. Square 382, third municipal district bounded by Kellerick, Marai, Columbus, and Henriette, the Little Streets. The municipal addresses are 1459 to 1463 Henriette, the Little Street. The applicant has requested a deferral in order to revise the subdivision proposal. Several options exist for subdividing the property, each of which have their own pros and cons, and none of which staff has fully evaluated or endorses at this point. The requested deferral will afford the applicant the opportunity to weigh options that exist for subdividing lot 11A. Staff recommends deferral of zoning docket 00518 until the March 27, 2018 City Planning Commission meeting. Thank you so much. I uh, have one corner in support, Rachel Bland. Hello, my name is Rachel Bland. I'm staff at Providence Community Housing. Um, I have submitted the change to make it three lots and just here to defer and if there, I was recommended to come here in case there are any questions, but otherwise I'll see you at the next meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Um, is there anyone here in opposition to the zoning docket matter? If not, then it close the public hearing portion for the zoning docket matter. Is there a motion by a commissioner? Ready to defer. Um, to the April 10th, is it 10th? March 27th. March 27th. Move to defer to the March 27th meeting. Is there a second? Is there a second? Yes. Second by Commissioner Dunn. Uh, the motion by Commissioner Brown was to defer to the second meeting in March. I'll call the question all in favor of the motion. Aye. Opposed? Motion is carried. Next subdivision docket, 1018. Subdivision docket 1018 is a request by Gislason Group LLC to resubdivide lot 1 into proposed lots 1A and 1B on square 157 in the 5th Municipal District, founded by Barrett, Homer, Vallette, and Newton Street. The municipal addresses are 601 to 615 Homer Street. 
and uh, 901 Verrett Street. Lot 1 contains existing two-family residents with frontage on Homer and Verrett Streets and an existing single-family res residence situated near the rear property line with frontage on Homer Street. The applicant has requested to resubdivide the one lot into two lots in order to renovate the two single-family residence on the respective lots of record. Since the proposed subdivision involves the separation of two existing main uses and one parcel, it is reviewed under Policy E of the subdivision regulations. The proposal meets criteria A, B, C, and E of Policy E, and though Lot 1A would provide a minimum lot area of 2,690 square feet, and would meet the minimum requirement of 1,800 square feet. Proposed lot 1B would provide only 1,486 square feet of lot area and would fail to meet criterion D of the subdivision regulations. The staff believes the proposed lot line separating the two uses could be shifted slightly in order to meet this requirement and avoid the need for a waiver. The staff believes the proposed resubdivision accomplishes the overall intent of the regulations to separate existing buildings that are currently on the same lot or lots of record. The staff also believes the applicant could revise the survey to meet the minimum lot area requirement deficiency for lot 1B. The staff believes the proposed uses are consistent with the master plan and the proposed subdivision achieves the goals of the subdivision regulations. Therefore, the staff recommends tentative approval of subdivision docket 1018 with final approval subject to two waivers and five provisos. I have one, one call from the speaker, Tom Dobbins. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kyle Goggins. I live at 2501 Della Chase Street in New Orleans, and I am project manager for the Gizelson Group. I'm speaking in favor of the resubdivision of the two properties according to the submitted request. 601 and 615 Homer are currently on one lot of record. Uh, they have been vacant and blighted for close to two decades. Uh, the larger house, 601, has um, been in threat of collapse due to the amount of neglect. The Gizelson Group is currently renovating them and is utilizing state historic tax credits, so the investment is not only substantial, but also consistent with the nature of the neighborhood. As the City Planning Commission staff indicates, uh, these two properties, if resubdivided according to the request, uh, will have one lot that is substandard, uh, that being 615 Homer. Uh, however, the staff also has shown that the substandard size lots are found throughout the neighborhood and are consistent with the historic neighborhood. Um, I reviewed the uh, staff report and um, I think it spotted about 14 lots um, with similar substandard character uh, within the two to three block uh, radius of the property in question. Um, in addition, 615 Homer is only 780 square feet. Um, it will be a one bedroom, one bath house, whereas 601 Homer is over 2,000 square feet and will be a four bedroom, three bath family house. Uh, the substandard lot proposed by the resubdivision um, request is 331.5. 64 square feet smaller than the standard 1800 square foot lot. Uh, this reflects the future use of the two houses. A smaller lot for a one bedroom house, though it will have, uh, will now have an off street parking available uh, once the renovation is complete, and a larger lot for a four bedroom family home. To deny this request and require both properties to meet the minimum lot size does not reflect the use of the homes. In addition, it creates a situation where the investment that was made to put the properties back into commerce is compromised and could potentially create a situation in which the larger home is not sellable. In addition, allowing this to occur incentivizes putting smaller homes back into commerce um, at an affordable price. Keeping the small house on this lot um, with a small lot for itself allows us to sell the small house for um, under $175,000. Uh, we ask that you um, please take this in co into consideration and vote to recognize the diversity of houses and neighborhoods and allow the resubdivision as requested. Um, and the one thing I might add to my written remarks, um, basically we're agreeing with the staff's recommendation um, with the, the addition of one waiver um, for the um, policy E um, requirement um, under, I think, criterion D uh, for the 1,800 square foot minimum lot. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Question for the applicant. So what are you asking for in lieu of that of the staff recommendation on that on that? We're point? just we're just allowing that uh, we're just asking that the um, the lot line be accepted as proposed so that the small house um, has a lot that's commensurate with its size. Essentially the two houses are on one lot and if the if the requirement is put forward that they both are this you know meet the requirement then the, the small house will have a very large lot compared to the size of the house and the, the large house will have a pretty small lot. Essentially the, the small house will have a, a, a large side yard um, that's almost the same size as the house itself, almost double the size of the floor plan of the house, whereas the four bedroom larger house will have a very small, narrow rear backyard, which would make it pretty hard to be used uh, for its intended purpose as a family structure. Staff thoughts? So this is a policy E subdivision request that um, structures can be found that were constructed prior to 1929 can be reviewed under policy E, which instead of looking at the underlying base zoning lot area requirements for a single family house in this district would be, I think, 2,250 square feet, can be considered to be um, policy E requires a minimum of 1,800. Uh, the survey submitted shows that one of the lots, lot 1A, would meet this requirement. Lot 1B would be deficient of the 1800 um, with 1468. There is room in staff's analysis. We um, looked at moving the lot line. Uh, it would be about 10 feet um, towards lot 1A. That would then allow it to meet the 1800 square feet. It would allow lot 1A to maintain its rear yard setback. Um, it already, the request is already resulting in a waiver for the lot depth that subdivision is creating a deficient lot depth here. But moving this lot line would not uh, affect that any, any more adversely um, than, than what's proposed. And so our um, review resulted in moving this just 10 feet would allow both of these to then meet the policy of these sub, uh, subdivision regulations. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. They would. So if this were, um, if it was agreed that this should be under 1,800 square feet, it would require an additional variance um, to allow the substandard lot, not meeting the 1,800 square feet. We would have to do an additional yes. variance. Thank you. Are there any other questions for staff? Any other comments? If not, is there a motion? Yeah, I mean, to, to be clear, it's it's the subdivision regulations that has that 1,800 foot yeah. limit. It's not the zoning regulation. And so the commission could waive that 1,800 foot requirements without having to justify it by the nine criteria for variances. Well, we're not recommending that it be waived because it's possible to comply. I just, to, to be clear, it's a different, it's a different type of... So if we were to choose to waive it, what would be the... What, what, what would be... Uh, the underlying basis for us to be able to, you said we were able to, we could waive it. Does it have, to, but we don't have to meet all nine criteria to waive it, is what you're saying? Right, because it's a requirement of subdivision regulation. So, so the point of this policy is you've got a, bit, a yeah. lot, two structures, and you want to have this certain minimum lot size to accommodate parking and setbacks. And so, uh, you know, we're not, there's a way of meeting that 1800 foot requirement pretty cleanly here, so we're not supporting right. a waiver. And so, if you disagree with that, you're, you're free to come to that conclusion, but that's not where the staff is at. Okay. I'm sorry, may I add just one thing for uh, If you have a comment based on the lot line placement, I'm open to hearing something on that because that's what I'm struggling with in terms of the motion. So, um, you know, we, before this um, issue came up, we thought kind of 
diligently about how this would play out and, and where the lot line should go. And it's hard to see in this picture here, but really what you're looking at is the side of the lot and the side street. You've got the small pink cottage, you've got a, a much larger two-story home. Before we started construction, there was a garage, a shed that was right between those two buildings that was almost to the very edges of the two buildings. So there was essentially no yard between them. Um, that shed has been removed. Um, so there's a pretty decently sized yard there. What we're just trying to make sure is that we create a good balance so that both houses have a yard that, that makes sense. The, the way that we're proposing it, the yard for the small house would have enough room where the buyer can either make uh, an off-street parking space for one car um, or make a patio or both, um, while the, the larger house also has that opportunity and also has a decently sized backyard for a uh, four-bedroom house. And the four-bedroom house in this area is pretty pretty substantial, and this is the only way that we, we, we see that we can actually make these two properties work as marketable properties. Plus, it enables us to, to, to sell the smaller house um, at, a, at a reasonable rate that you know most people in the area uh, would be interested in and potentially could afford not having to offset that because of the size of the lot. So it's really just about creating a decent enough yard for both houses so that it makes sense for a, one, a small one-bedroom house and then also a much larger four-bedroom family house. Our, our overall goal is to just put them back into commerce consistent with that. Thank you. So the, the, the other house is down home or this way, correct? correct? So that shed that we're looking at in the middle is what's come down. So it's basically correct. two side yards that we're talking about splitting. Uh, well, the, the larger house where the cursor is actually faces, um, it's on the corner. Right, so but that's what we're street. talking about is what, what's facing yeah, on the It's going to be the backyard of that house, the side yard of the small pink house. But that's the only, that's the only yard for this four bedroom house. Yes, yes. yes. All right, I'll make the motion. Uh, I, I, I uh, uh, am willing to waive uh, uh, the, the subdivision standard um, and make a motion in support of the applicant's uh, request uh, based on uh, the size of the housing and proportionality in the yards uh, to the two houses. Uh, I'm, I'm compelled uh, by getting them back into commerce and uh, the, the argument that was made by the applicant about the relativity of the size of the two houses and metering out the yard uh, 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 accordingly. Is there a second to the motion? Second. Is there a move by Commissioner Weaver um, to approve staff report for uh, Adler also for the subdivision? For the subdivision docket waive the 18,000 square foot requirement. Eighteen hundred uh, re oh, requirement <laughs> to, to waive the requirement. It's been seconded by Commissioner Green. Is there any other comment on this motion? If not, I'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion is carried. Thank you so much, especially for the work that you're doing to you. rehab both of those properties and get them in commerce. Thank you. Absolutely. Your attention. I was going on there. All right. Um, so moving on to adoption of the minutes for the February 27th, 2018 meeting. Moved by Commissioner Brown. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Green. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we, uh, we don't have any committee reports. However, we do have uh, one announcement. Um, we're happy to have our latest commissioner, Mayor Lund, uh, with us. Thank you so much and welcome. All on board. Would you like to say anything? Put you on the spot, huh? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just jump in and swim, right? <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Lund. Um, any announcements from our executive director? No. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Chair, I regret that I definitely cannot attend the next meeting and i noticed a couple of times we've been at five so you might want to check with the others to we'll make sure they can stay thanks for yeah. morning thank you just because you announced that way of course it doesn't mean you're getting special thank you so much for the commissioner green uh is there a motion for adjournment so moved 
moved by Commissioner Weaver, second by Commissioner Brown. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? We're dismissed.